Good evening again and welcome to the Open Houses of Study Night. We're so happy that you're joining us from wherever you're joining us in the world. I see people on multiple continents, so I'm glad you're here. Glad you're um, here to enjoy what we have to share with you this evening. Um, but before we get started, I, if we could, I'd like to just open us in a word of prayer, and um, then we'll have time to hear from multiple people who are here with us this evening, okay? Shall we pray? Father, we want to pause to say thank you for the life you've given us, for the joy we found in you, and for the rest you invite us into. We pray that um, as we exchange thoughts and ideas in this community of your followers, that your presence would be with us and that this time would be fruitful and blessed. We ask for this <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, um, tonight is a night to explore one of the specific unique features of Scolay Academy, and that is our houses of study. There are um, various online classical services providers. There are various ways to take courses, but to my knowledge, Scolay Academy is the only one with this unique concoction of houses of study where believers of all stripes and traditions can find a home with us. And so I wanted to just orient us just briefly to what we're about as an academy. And then I'm going to turn it over to the chairs of our houses of study to tell you more. So to begin, I'll introduce myself. I am Joy Lynn Blake, and I'm the director of Scully Academy. And um, I'm delighted to serve in this way. I serve as sort of the overarching um, director and oversight for the academy in general. And then we have, as I said, these three distinct houses of study. I'm going to show you our website because that may be how you found us. Uh, most people find us through, you know, either something that a friend told them about, something they located on social media or otherwise, or just perusing the web. So this may look familiar to you. I'm going to show you our main website homepage. And on this homepage, you'll see a great and cheerful welcome to Scully Academy. And you'll notice our logo with three distinct um, little small icon logos here. And those will come in very handy, as you'll see shortly. But this is our homepage. And if you notice up here, we have a House of Studies page. And underneath there is uh, information about our Great Hall and then our three houses of study. This friends, tonight's meeting is a focus on these three houses of study. If you are exceptionally curious, um, we invite you to next Thursday night, same bat time, same bat channel, actually a different channel. There's a different link, but it is part two of our open houses where you'll learn more about what is available in our great hall. But tonight's focus is these three houses of study. And before we go any further, this is a special treat for our instructors who have joined the call tonight. And for those families who are interested, we are right now concocting our website updates, overhauls, and revisions. So I thought I'd give you a quick sneak peek of currently, if you, if you hover on these houses, you can definitely visit the Houses of Study page. I'm going to let you see the rough draft that will be unveiled during preview week, February 1st. So this is our Aquinas house. You'll see these lovely images. Welcome to the Aquinas house. And then you'll get to scroll and this is incomplete. It's just a, it's just a draft, but you'll get to see all the beautiful courses that are available to families specifically and strictly in the Aquinas house. The same will be true in St. Raphael school and in the Canterbury house. So, um, I want to begin by just um, orienting us to what it is that unifies us. And as we have these various houses of study, one of the things that brings us together is all under the banner of the term skole. As an idea, this originated with the Greeks and it was transformed and extended by the church especially, you may know, in the monastic centers of education. So we're seeking to recover this approach in that 
um, not to make all of our students monks, we're seeking to recover this approach of education that's contemplative, that is restful, and that it's full of Christian peace. We are not in support of a frenetic, pack it all in pace of education. We're in support of a pace where it can go down deep. And they can, as the word of God admonishes us, to meditate deeply, and then it transform into their active lives. So what does that mean? It means we draw people from all over, all over the United States, all in Canada, and then throughout the world. We have instructors and um, students that join from many different countries, continents, etc. So what is it that brings any kind of continuity to this group? Well, we all fall under the full support of the Nicene Creed. This is our shared statement of faith. And Scully Academy instructors do affirm the dogmas of the Nicene Creed without exception. And we affirm the traditional moral teachings of the faith. We find the scriptural precedent for this, of course, in Psalm 133 that states it's pleasant and good for brethren to dwell in unity. And that's what we want to represent at all times in our great hall. Having said that, we recognize that there are real and important distinctions between the great Christian traditions. And so as um, with that truth, we have designed a virtual campus that respects these great Christian traditions. It's our common educational goals that have given Scholar Academy the opportunity to serve Protestants, Catholics, and Orthodox Christians alike. You'll see on the diagram the big picture of the Great Hall. This is where students um, can enroll in all kinds of general courses of academic study that are classically and restfully taught. But if they want specific religious instruction in a variety of courses, um, they can enter a house of study. And there in our houses of study are courses and conversations that are faithful to their particular tradition and its important distinctives. Now, I'm not going to take the time to read these accolades. There could be many but I'm going to pause, give everyone a chance to take a breath, and you, friends, read some of the accolades from just some of our families and their experience as part of one of our houses of study. Hope that gave you a little taste of what some of our courses can um, provide and invest in families. And if you didn't quite get to read them all, uh, what can I say? Presbyteria can teach us all how to speed read a little. It's a skill she has. Um, so friends, we, I, I have just mentioned um, Presbyteria Maria Culianos. She is the wonderful beloved principal of our Orthodox House of Studies, St. Raphael School. And then we have Rhea Bright, who is the chair of our Canterbury House, which is our Anglican House of Studies. And then we have Monica Meinhardt, who is the chair of our Catholic House of Studies, the Aquinas House. So I did those introductions in reverse order. We will now hand it over to these ladies who will go in the, in the correct order as they present just a little snippet for you of what that house is like, what it's about. And then friends and family, you're gonna have an opportunity to actually enter the house with them. That is go to a different Zoom room with them to learn more specifically based on this survey that you're getting and your interest. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it to Miss Monica to tell us just a little bit about the Aquinas house. Thank you, Joylyn. Um, it, and are you guys clicking for me slides? Okay, <laughs> just checking. Um, okay, so hi, I am Monica Meinhart. I am a military spouse. So my husband serves in the Marine Corps um, and I have four children. Um, 
I mention both of those things as they're very applicable. Um, we have not, we, we currently homeschool those four children, but we have not always homeschooled. Um, we've kind of seen the light in military life that homeschooling is just much easier when you move every three years. Um, but we also entered into homeschooling for many other reasons. And Skole Academy classes were actually a big part of that because years ago, um, we had homeschooled originally when my children were younger, um, when it I thought it was easier then. I, I kind of think it's easier now. Um, but anyhow, we found some summer classes through School A Academy. We found their Greek and Latin curriculum through Classical Academic Press, and we just loved it. Um, and so now, as my children are older and I'm homeschooling them, it is wonderful. And I think it makes it possible that I can outsource tricky classes like pre-algebra and Latin. Um, it just frees me up a lot so that I can focus on teaching them um, classes, uh, subjects that I really uh, thrive in personally, like writing and religion. So um, let's see. Uh, also about me personally, so nothing up on the slide yet. Um, um, my educational background is um, I studied at the University of Michigan. I have my um, major in English and minor in early Christian studies, and then I went to divinity school at the University of Chicago. Um, you might notice, and some do, that, oh, those aren't Catholic schools. No, they're not. Um, I specifically really wanted an ecumenical education when it came to religion. Um, I was blessed to be able to study in the Greek Papyrology Lab at the University of Michigan, which has one of the highest concentrations of Greek Papyrology papyri and specifically New Testament papyri. So it was a very spiritual experience studying there, but um, I wanted to learn about religion in a very ecumenical um, environment. Um, part of that has to do with how I was raised. Um, my father's Muslim and my mother's Catholic, and we were raised Catholic, um, but obviously there was a great deal of various conversations there. Um, and then also, I was baptized when I was three, um, Catholic, but I didn't really, you know, we call it a reversion when you're baptized Catholic young, and then you kind of come to really understand and appreciate your faith as a, an adult or a young adult. Um, and I didn't really come to that reversion um, until I was late in high school, and it was through going to Bible studies with um, Protestant friends that I had made at my public high school. So um, my background is very ecumenical, but um, all that to say, then following that reversion, I went to a youth conference at Steubenville, um, Franciscan University in Steubenville, and the topic, thankfully, that summer for me, which is what I needed, was called Rise Up to Your Catholic Faith, and it went through all the doctrinal teachings of our Catholic faith, and so it was just this perfect mix of um, combination of all these different Christian traditions and then finding my home, you know, speaking of houses, finding my home in the Catholic church uh, for myself. And it was right before I went to college, perfect timing. Um, and then I guess the rest is history. So um, I have then with military, I've moved around a lot. And so I've had to find jobs everywhere I moved and um, was able to be a director of religious education and youth minister um, and then obviously finding School Academy has been a blessing as well because we might move this summer and we just moved last summer and that's okay because I can keep my job. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so, um, okay, now to the slides. Sorry um, about that if you want to go back to that. So Aquinas House, right? So um, I love that there are just so many classes offered at School Academy, but I really do, um, you know, big, big thing for me and for my own children um, and for for all young Catholics, I think it's really important to get to know and surround yourself with peers um, who share the same faith and share the same background. And so uh, here I just, um, you can read it. Uh, well, I'll just read it for you, I guess. Aquinas House of Study seeks to support the spiritual formation of students into the image of Christ through fostering a strong prayer life fixed firmly in the liturgical traditions of the church, aided by the study of scripture, the catechism of the Catholic church and the Catholic liberal arts tradition. Um, I won't read the rest of it, but um, that those kind of, I kind of highlighted that in um, black section because 
we really try to utilize scripture and the catechism, especially in all of our classes, um, so that children, um, you know, in Catholic religious education, I do believe there's a bit of um, a bit lacking sometimes in terms of our use of actually reading the Bible and reading the catechism. Um, there's been a bit of a revival of that in the in the recent years, but um, in the Aquinas house, we really try and strive to incorporate scripture and the catechism in most of our lessons. And it's really beautiful to, you know, see uh, young people so fluent in handling a catechism um, that maybe, you know, adults uh, have no idea what it is and so uh, or how to use it. So um, here's a, a quick uh, list of current offered classes in uh, the Aquinas house. And then the next slide. Um, and then this is kind of like the main other thing uh, in from the catechism. I thought I'd take from the catechism. Oops, I forgot. I said I was a writing person and I forgot a parentheses. But um, <laughs> from the catechism, it says, parents have the first responsibility for the education of their children. They bear witness to this responsibility first by creating a home where tenderness, forgiveness, respect, fidelity, and disinterested service are the rule. The home is well-suited for education in the virtues. And so all that to say, um, we serve as a supplement, and I, I believe this is true for all of school aid instructors, but within the Catholic Church, we really do teach um, that the parents are the primary educators. And so we just strive to work with families um, to meet their needs. And um, we've just, I know, um, I speak for all of the Aquinas House instructors when I say we have had so many families come to us with um, certain, you know, desires and needs for their children, certain um, things that come up during the year, different educational needs, different spiritual needs, and we just work with families on a case-by-case -case basis within the classes, and I think it's really beautiful. That's um, It fits the school lay model, but I think it's just a way to complement what you all as parents are doing at home, and that's the, the primary goal. We don't want to um, take, you know, the lead in that sense, you know, so um, the last thing, the last slide is just mentioning that next year, new in the 2024-25 school year, um, we will be adding a weekly uh, praying the Angelus. Um, and so once a week at noon, not at 6 a.m., um, at noon, we will be praying the Angelus and it will be just a dial in. Um, you don't have to do a Zoom call like um, where everybody sees each other's faces, but just a way to kind of be in the loop with the rest of the Aquinas House students. Um, and you can just do it once a week. You, you could do it once the whole year, um, but a way to kind of stay linked together. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. So sorry if I talked too long. <laughs> Not at all. It's beautiful to hear. I meant to set a timer on myself, but I forgot. <laughs> it's beautiful. The next person that we're going to hear from is Rhea Bright, who is the chair of our um, Canterbury House, which is specifically for, um, in keeping with the Anglican tradition, but it, it's definitely welcoming to all Protestants. Um, and I'm sure that she'll speak more to that. So um, without further ado, Rhea, take it away and let me know when you're ready, ready for me to share. Okay, thank you. Um, well, um, just a couple of things about myself. My, you know, I grew up actually in the, what's called the United Church of Canada, which was a union of Methodist and Presbyterian churches. Um, and attended as a child Baptist and Presbyterian services as well fairly regularly. So I'm very I'm personally very familiar with a variety of Protestant traditions. But I was confirmed an Anglican in university at the age of 19. And then I married an Anglican uh, priest. I'm ordained here in Nova Scotia, where I live now. Um, and um, he has served in a number of parishes in Canada and the United States. And um, he is now retired <laughs> for what that means. <laughs> We've discovered retirement for a clergyman. It doesn't, mm, doesn't involve a lot of retirement. He's taking three services this Sunday. Um, and, you know, have been sort of, it, it's been sort of exciting to be, have been invited to be um, part of 
the founding of the Canterbury House of Studies, my own background is actually in ancient and medieval studies, and mostly I've taught classics and, and some medieval things. So it's it's been really quite fun for me to really delve deeply into, for instance, the period of the Reformation. Um, okay, uh, Joy Lynn, that's you can put up the slides. That's that's enough about me, probably. So what I've put at the top of this slide is, is what it says on the website about Canterbury House, that it seeks to assist families in forming the hearts and minds of students through the study of the Bible and the practice of a biblically centered historic prayer book Anglicanism. And I always worry that that may be immediate um, uh, people who are not Anglican may then turn away from it. So the first thing I want to emphasize is that the Canterbury House of Studies is, is Protestant. Um, and so I've highlighted there the study of the Bible. Um, and so one of the goals of Canterbury House is to foster unity uh, amongst Protestant Christians, or really, to be honest, Christians in general, where anyone is welcome to join our courses, while also respecting our differences, our differences in, in things like worship style or sacramental theology. Um, we do have these things in common. And therefore, you know, I, I will just I point, pointed out these three things here that we believe there's one body of Christ, though it's composed of a diversity of churches. There's one faith that's revealed in the Holy Scripture and defined in the creeds. Um, and that the, and this is maybe perhaps what defines us as Protestant, the canonical scriptures of the Old and New Testaments are the inspired word of God containing all things necessary to salvation. So this is, I think, uh, a sort of common um, foundational belief that we would share with with all Protestant denominations. Okay, next slide, please, Joylin. But at the same time, Canterbury House is also Anglican, and we have some, a few courses that are specifically about um, the doctrine, sacraments, and disciplines of the Anglican communion. Anglicanism has suffered a bit of a crisis of identity over the last few decades, and uh, there are many people working hard in many ways to uh, revive our traditional teachings. Uh, and so this is one of the things we do at Canterbury. And I've put up the three sort of traditional formularies, the Book of Common Prayer, the Ordinal, and the 39 Articles of Religion. So our courses um, are all designed to partner with families, to assist families uh, in guiding students to know and love the Lord and to walk with him. So I've put up a list of the the, the general categories of courses that we have. Um, as a house of studies, to, to be teaching Anglican catechesis, uh, instructors have to be practicing Anglicans. Um, the other courses are generally broad and open to anybody who is, is you know, a uh, of practicing in other Protestant denominations. Um, and then finally, uh, we are also going to be offering uh, a weekly devotional once a week. Um, I haven't yet decided the time and day of the week, but I think it will be a morning devotion. I just want to make sure it doesn't conflict with anybody else's. Um, uh, a short time where people can well, I don't know how it will work exactly, but those details will be figured out. People can join and we'll have a time of prayer, short scripture reading, um, Thanksgiving, and uh, be able to join together uh, in prayer. So, yes, um, if you want to hear more about Canterbury House courses, meet our instructors. We have two instructors present with us uh, today, Elizabeth Kaufman, Nathan Dickinson, uh, we have some new co course offerings next year. Um, Elizabeth can tell us about the music that she's writing to accompany some of her, her courses. Uh, so please, if you would like to hear more, join us in our house session next. Thank you so much. Um, last but certainly not least, the lovely Presbyterian Maria Culianos, who is the principal of our St. Raphael School, and um, that represents our Orthodox House of Studies. Take it away, Presbyterian. 
Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, Christ is in our midst. Uh, it's always so lovely to be here with colleagues and with everyone within our community. Um, I'm Presbytera Maria Cuyanos. Presbytera is a um, title, which means priest of a white. Uh, <laughs> reverse that. <laughs> wife of a priest <laughs> in the Greek Orthodox tradition. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit late. Um, and um, so my husband is actually the priest of St. George Cathedral in Springfield, Massachusetts. He is the dean of the cathedral. And um, I've been an educator, gosh, longer than I've been married. So 26, 27 years. Um, and so I have um, my education degrees are both uh, in um, lower school, middle school, and upper school. And in addition to that, I did attend Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology, and I have a Master's of Divinity and a Master's of Theological or uh, Theology, in which I wrote my um, my thesis on the liturgical view of um, the Theotokos, um, and how each Sunday is viewed as, lowercase a, annunciation of each and every one of us. So having said that, uh, of course, the faith is near and dear to my heart um, and um, teaching alongside it. So St. Raphael's School. St. Raphael School is classical, engaging, restful, and of course, orthodox. Um, we are a school within a school. We actually have a full-fledged liberal arts program. So if you do come to um, our breakout room today, we'll show you these curriculum maps and, and um, scope and sequence of our courses. Um, St. Raphael School takes learning from wonder to wisdom. One of the things that um, I love doing is figuring things out with the kids, and so do our students, our, our, our teachers. We love just to kind of navigate um, everything and uh, really enjoy taking um, that wonder and bringing it to wisdom. Um, St. Raphael School offers an integrated K-12 liberal arts program. What does that mean? Well, that means that we are um, teaching within the liberal arts, reading, writing, rhetoric, history, natural science, and orthodox studies, all wrapped up into a holistic approach to learning using the good and great books. And so this program is K through 12. And actually, we have 14 years of uh, unrepeated um, um, curriculum that we use uh, within our school. Um, St. Raphael School engages students relationally and personally. We clearly look at the personhood of every student, of every instructor, of every parent. And we know that we are collaborating together for the good of that student and their educational goals that are set there with, um, with their families. And then St. Raphael School aims as members of the body of Christ to journey and discover what is true, good, and beautiful for fostering virtuous transformation into theoses. Ultimately, we all are here, as of course my, my sisters in Christ have mentioned before me, forming humanity. That is the ultimate goal. Um, St. Raphael School offers a plethora of classes uh, for students K through 12, from uh, lower school all the way up to upper school. We offer Greek, Russian, Arabic, the good and great books, Orthodox catechism that is taught by either um, priests of pan-Orthodox priests from different jurisdictions or theologians that do have and carry an MDiv or higher degree, um, common arts, humanities, poetry, creative writing. We have a very comprehensive iconography program that is K-12 as well. Byzantina Carpatho Rusin chant, which is now becoming also comprehensive with a uh, lower school fundamental chant course. 
and so much more. And we also offer adult courses as a service to our families because many times they tell us, we really wish we could learn alongside our kids. And so we do offer some adult courses um, as a service to our families. Ultimately for St. Raphael School, for us, it is where community is at the heart. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times students have called and said, we're just driving through your city. Can we just stop for a hug? And I said, yes, a hug, and I'll bake you some cookies. Um, and so many times uh, it sounds like online community education is impersonal, but in actuality, it is so personal. Especially with Scola Academy, we, we don't have chat boxes. Mics have to be on, cameras have to be on. We are personal, we are relational. And our kids, our families, our instructors grow close as a community of learners. And so ultimately that's at the heart of who we all are. And one of my favorite memories just recently was um, <clears throat> longtime family, Bean family, Ramona Bean, who's now also an instructor, um, her family was coming through Springfield, Massachusetts, and I had taught her son, Thomas, since he was in second grade, and now he's a high schooler. And just getting to meet him in person for the first time, it was just such an amazing experience. Now, they're from Florida, and I'm in Massachusetts. So, you know, the, the chances of them coming through when they were coming through, you know, it, it's kind of difficult. But it was just an amazing experience. Now, I'll never forget, we stayed at the couches in, in the solea of the church or in the in the um uh, in the cultural center of the church. And um, it was like, we were just family that hadn't been together for a while. And so that's a similar feeling that we have, not only at St. Raphael's School, but in all of our houses, in the Great Hall, within, uh, amongst us instructors. I mean, we go out our, of our way to meet each other and it is something really special. So here are some examples. Uh, here, here's me meeting up with <laughs> the Riker kids over the summer because, you know, we just missed each other. So <laughs> we needed to meet, meet. But as you can see, the work, I, our iconography program, these are um, um, examples of student work. Um, over here in the corner, lower school iconography student work. Here's a, dia, uh, a, a diorama of an actual church. Um, of course, recently, School A Academy, just this past uh, Christmas, uh, headed by Dr. Blake, we had a holiday festival, which was quite spectacular, and I loved it so, so I had to put that in there. Uh, student journal, our Orthodox um, common arts, where they bake various things that are used in the liturgical cycle of the church, and so much more. So um, if you're interested in finding out what um, we do at St. Raphael School, please feel free to reach out. But ultimately, anywhere you go here in Scola Academy is pretty cool. Thank you so much. I concur. And um, my own daughter has um, taken courses in the Great Hall and is entering a house of study this um this spring semester. So now is the opportunity for you, our guest, to pop into a room to be able to visit more personally with um, Monica, with Rhea, with uh, Presbyterian Maria, to and instructors that teach within that house to learn more about that. And before you go, this, I want to everyone to be aware that uh, right here, we have a virtue calendar that was um, one of the classical academic press products. And um, one family out of every room will receive this as a gift. So just our way of um, thanking you for coming this evening and being part of us. And um, trust me, you'll love it. I have one myself. It's a beautiful virtue calendar for the... Um, 
2024 year. So um, your chairs of their houses will um, award those in the room.